things that people think about when they're going to purchase fish or fish oil is does it have mercury in it, mm. um, he different heavy metals, different environmental contaminants that are polluting our water. Years ago when we came up with this IFOS certification, we took those consumer concerns and worked with brands that are on the market to help them become more transparent about what's actually in their bottles. So we actually do testing of the product itself according to lot number. So we test for oxidation, that's your peroxide and anisidine values. Peroxide is a marker of short-term oxidation and anisidine is a, a marker of long-term oxidation of an oil. So what we do is we measure both of those, combine the results together, and that gives you an a, a overall picture of how the oil has been handled over its lifetime. Um, we also test for heavy metals, that's arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury. And we test for environmental contaminants. That's your PCBs, dioxins, dioxins and furans. And that's what's sort of the, um, they call them persistent organic pollutants that kind of are in the water and eventually are absorbed by the fish. And then the last thing we test for is EPA and DHA content of the bottle because that's the active ingredient that you're looking for when you buy the fish oil. And we want to make sure that what it says on the label is actually in that capsule. We're going to talk all about fish oil testing, fish oil quality, and some things you should know about when it comes to purchasing fish oil. That's right. It's happening, Kevin. It's, it's really good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Great to be with you. Your wife's an entrepreneur and business owner. She yes. does a lot of... What's yes. her channel, just so folks... Um, her channel is Relove and Rise. So okay. she has her own podcast, her own YouTube channel, and the website's reloveandrise.com awesome. as well. Yeah. So she did bikini competitions for a while, now helps people with mindset and all that. Yes, definitely. Cool. Mm -hmm. So we'll put the links below, guys, so you can check that out. But, um, so you've been a research... Like, you have a, a master's degree in... in I have a master's degree in human health and nutrition. Okay. And, um, yep, I did my, my master's at University of Guelph, and from there I got into the industry working for here at Nutrisource. Nutrisource. Cool. Mm -hmm. And so like your bread and butter product, Nutrisource, is the IFOS certification. So for folks, you know, they go to Costco or Shoppers or wherever to buy fish oil. Uh, what can be wrong with that process? I know there's a lot of things. And, then, and how does your certification help consumers better understand what's in the bottle? Okay. So maybe if I start at the beginning of, yeah. you know, how, the sort of how we came up with the certification. Um, normally, the, one of the number one things that people think about when they're going to purchase fish or fish oil is does it have mercury in it, mm. um, he different heavy metals, different environmental contaminants that are polluting our water. So years ago when we came up with this IFOS certification, we, look, we took those consumer concerns and worked with brands that are on the market to help them become more transparent about what's actually in their bottles. So we actually do testing of the product itself according to lot number and post those results online for consumers to see. Mm -hmm. So when you go to shoppers, Loblaws, any of the pharm pharmacies, if you see that IFOS certification on your bottle, that means you can actually look at the lot number, look at the expiry date on that bottle, go to our website and see exactly what's in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, some nutrition companies will say, oh, well, we third party test anyway, so why should I do that? And, and what can be, what, what would you say to that? You know? What I would say to that is even if they third party test, Unless they're releasing those results to the public like we do, um, they're not being 100% transparent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there's often times when something can be oxidized or it's slightly out of spec and they say, let's just push it through anyway, right? No one's really going to look at it. So you're really like making the private public, which is great. So it's really just this very transparent. Yes. Which yes. Is especially awesome. with especially with oxidation of fish oil. That's a big concern that's going on in the media right now. Mm -hmm. So we've, you know, we've helped to author a couple papers about best practices for, for fish oil as well. So we not only test products, but we help to make them better as well. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, well, you hit on the mercury. Is that a realistic concern now, or is it more the um, oxidation? It will depend on the level of fish oil that, that you're taking. Mm. For the most part, a lot of brands out there are very good. Um, the manufacturing processes around fish oil have gotten very good. So mercury isn't as much of a concern if you're taking a high quality brand, especially an IFOS certified brand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else doing what you guys are doing? 
in, in the industry because I know there's there's a, a lot of third party labs, Chromadex and this and that. But mm -hmm. I think you've really cemented yourself as the authority when it comes to fish and krill oil as the leaders of for all the different modalities. And we can talk about now maybe what are, besides mercury, what are you guys testing for? I mean, so we test for oxidation. That's mm -hmm. your peroxide and anisidine values. One of them is a peroxide is a marker of short term oxidation and anisidine is a, a marker of long-term oxidation of an oil. So what we do is we measure both of those, combine the results together, and that gives you a, a, a overall picture of how the oil has been handled over its lifetime. Um, we also test for heavy metals, that's arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury, mm -hmm. and we test for environmental contaminants. That's your PCBs, dioxins, dioxins and furans, and that's what's sort of the, um, they call them persistent organic pollutants, that, mm -hmm kind of are in the water and eventually are absorbed by the fish. And then the last thing we test for is EPA and DHA content of the bottle because that's the active ingredient that you're looking for when you buy the fish oil. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that what it says on the label is actually in that capsule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you find that to be not the case frequently? Where the, the label is claiming X and you test it and you're like, whoa, this is a little off. Is that common? Um, because the IFOS program is voluntary, because of that reason, we tend to get high quality fish oils that apply to our program. Mm. So we do more than just the IFOS testing. I have seen many, many oils that do come under label spec are not up to what they say they have, but any, any oils that come to us specifically for the IFOS certification, the IFOS program, they, they know that they have a good product, that's why they're coming to us. Right, they've mm -hmm. already sought out really good raw materials and they're manufacturing yes. and so forth, yeah. yeah. That's a really great question. Um, really great point. So that's cool that you're looking at those persistent organic pollutants. That's mm -hmm. something that I think like a, a lot of doctors actually are aware of this, but mm -hmm. the end users, they hear, like you said, mercury, arsenic, the heavy metals, but mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, it wasn't many years ago that batteries and manufacturing would just dump into the ocean or the rivers and that ends up you know, bioaccumulating in the fish. And so that's great you're testing yes. for that. Yes. Um, because I'm sure as listeners know, uh, un like mercury, lead, cadmium, they're very toxic and all that, but they are, they do r more rapidly get excreted from the body mm -hmm. from sweat and from steam room and so forth. But BPA and phthalates and mm -hmm. these other compounds, they get stored in your fat tissue and they're harder to, to, to toxify. So I love yes. that you're doing that. Yes. That's great. Um, so what about the different forms? We know that there's ethyl ester and monoglyceride fish oil and triglyceride. Uh, I've learned through you know, my tenure at Zymogen and so forth that the, triglyc the triglyceride-based fish oil tends to have an issue potentially sometimes with oxidation stability. Have you heard or seen anything like that? Or? Oh, okay. Um, our position at the IFOS program, we do take in all types of fish oils, um, yeah. whether they're triglyceride, ethyl ester, um, from the research that I've seen, they do tend to have slightly different absorption rates into the body, that type of thing. Um, as far as oxidation, if the oil is handled properly, it's manufactured properly, and you're taking it you know, within the expiry date that the, that the manufacturer has set, as long as they've run the proper stability program, you shouldn't really have any, any problems there. I see, mm -hmm. okay. So you said that a few different times now. It, it sounds like the handling of the raw material is, is kind of a, a key factor as to its propensity to oxidize. Is that what you Yes, a hundred percent. Because there, you know, there, there's the people who catch the fish, there's the people who squish the fish, put it into barrels, it's then shipped to an encapsulator or a bottler. Along every step of that process, you have to make sure that you're controlling for um, oxygen, or the oil being exposed to oxygen. Mm -hmm. So when you're, when you're producing a high quality product, you need to work with manufacturers that have experience um, with, with working with oil products to avoid that oxidation. Hmm. For instance, when you're, when you're encapsulating, you're, you're working with a large volume of raw material. So before, before you can put that into your machinery, you have to actually nitrogen flush your machinery hmm. so that there's no oxygen present in there when you when you add your oil, that will then be inserted into the capsules. All the, there's all these little manufacturing things that you really want to go to an expert on for yeah. when you're making your product. Yes. Interesting. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. So it's and then so maybe you could talk about. Let's say I, I physically ingest an oxidized oil. What are the potential health ramifications of that? Would you say? 
That one I'm not too sure okay. of, actually. Maybe not. Yeah, yeah. you're... Well, I mean, we know that they're they're pro oxidative, yes. right? So they would basically damage cell membranes, mitochondrial mm -hmm. membranes, potentially DNA, potentially. So mm -hmm. uh, we know from like the cooking industry, like the processed yes. industrial seed oils, canola, safflower, etc. Yes, um, they're they're very prone to oxidation, and that's purported to be one of the reasons why they're unhealthy and consumption mm -hmm. of high volumes or, or even trace amounts potentially could be problematic. So anyway, just wanted to make that connection. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so heavy metals, um, we got the oxidation and nicotine, mm -hmm. A-N-I-S-I-D-I-M, -S something like that. Yes, anisidine okay. value. Yeah, so people want to go and research in that. If they type in like anisidine and fish oil, they'll, they'll, will some data come up? Yes, definitely. That's, that's the long-term measure of how your fish oil has been handled. So Oxidation of fish oil happens sort of in two steps. If you're taking a brand new fish oil that has no oxidation, when you first expose, expose it to ox oxygen, it will produce compounds that are found under the peroxide value test. Mm. So the reason we do it like that, the reason that we test like that is because breakdown of a natural, of a natural compound produces many compounds. Yeah. So what we have to do is uh, perform a test that all those all those compounds will be found under. If you try the test for each individual one, it, it'll take forever and it'll be incredibly expensive. Mm -hmm. So we do a peroxide value test to capture all those compounds. Mm -hmm. Now what happens is those peroxide compounds further break down into aldehydes, ketones, what we what we capture under the anisidine test. I see. Yes. Interesting. So the uh, ketone would be in there. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Ketones in, in and aldehydes, okay. yes. And what's as a, a class of compounds, yes. Sure, that makes sense. And what's a good level? I've heard like under five. You want for peroxide value, definitely yeah. under five, and for anisidine value, under under twenty. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's good, guys. So any fish oil that we recommend on this channel is going to have meet those specs under five yes. for the oxida oxidation products and twenty for anisidine. Uh, what else? I mean, what's what's on the forefront of this? I know you're adding krill. I think is that a new um, ICOS, was that? Um, ICOS for krill oil is, is quite new. Krill oil is, you know, in terms of the industry, it is new to the market. Yeah. Um, it's becoming incredibly popular. Mm -hmm. And we do have a couple different tests that we perform for krill oil because it is a different, it is a different compound. Mm -hmm. So we do um, inorganic arsenic oh. for krill oil. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And is that, can it be variable, high and low, depending upon the source like we're talking about? Yes. So for krill oil, it actually contains a high level of arsenic. Wow. But in organic. In, it's, it's primarily organic arsenic, which mm. actually doesn't have an effect, or doesn't have the negative effects associated with arsenic. Hmm. So we have to perform different testing that we don't perform on the fish oil. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I wonder who, did you guys kind of discover that, or was that something? N no, that's, I'm not exactly sure who discovered that, yeah. but it's, it's an industry, um, well, what's no, no. Yes, yes. Yeah, and then so you guys look, and, and so that's one of the things you gotta look for, I guess, with krill, make sure mm -hmm. that it's low enough. Yes, and krill oil, they do talk a lot about the bioavailability of krill because the, the um, fat, yes, the phospholipid fatty acids, mm -hmm. yes. Is krill, not to totally change gear, gears, mm -hmm. but is it as prone to oxidation because of that astaxanthin? Um, I haven't seen those studies myself. I, I, as an intuitive guess, I'd say that that's probably a possibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Super interesting. Um, but then, so for IFOS and the parameters, so you, you add the you know, expanded arsenic testing and mm -hmm. so forth, but you're kind of looking at the same things. When someone's looking at the bottle, they, they want to look for either ICOS or IFOS. That's correct. Krill or fish oil, respectively. Yes. Um, yeah. What about, uh, there's some radiation from Fukushima and stuff mm -hmm. like that in the Pacific Ocean. I yes. heard you guys are looking at that too. We, we do look at that. That's an optional test as part of our program. Mm -hmm. um, some companies choose to participate in that, others do not. Mm. Um, specifically for, for Zymogen, I believe they do participate in that program and we've never seen any problems with their, with yeah. their product, so. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great, that's really interesting. I mean, what, uh, just yet another thing we have to worry about as consumers, right? I mean, it's crazy, mm -hmm. all the different. Um, so kind of in closing, you know, people are, are 
trying to save money sometimes when it comes to supplements, right? Because they're buying yes. expensive food, they're buying this, they hear fish oil is good, and there's a lot of great research on fish oil. Uh, a lot of people just look for value. They, they mm -hmm. go to Costco, Shoppers, Sam's Club, and they see this big thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, you really don't know what's what's in that because it's they're not submitting it to third party testing. That's that's right. Yeah. Um, in my own life, because you know, my family, my friends, they know that I'm in the industry. They always ask me that. This is a very common question: yeah. which brand, what, which one should I be taking, and all that. I say to them, as a general rule in this industry, you do tend to get what you pay for. Yeah. If you if you are shopping on price and value instead of quality. In this industry, it can come back to bite you for sure. Totally. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like food, right? You yeah. go to the dollar store to buy food. Don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't expect organic blueberries or grass-fed beef or That's anything right. like that. That's right. Crazy. Uh, so the website is Nutrisource.ca. CA. Yes. And uh, so once you're on the website, let's say Sally Smith right now is consuming, I'm just going to make this up, Smith's Natural Fish Oil. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I wonder if it's IFOS certified. Can she go and search for that on your website? Yes. 100%. Mm -hmm. We're actually redoing the website as, as Today, we speak. Right? There's some server yes. issues going on here. Yes, so the, we're redoing the website, making it even easier for, for consumers to find their products. Mm -hmm. um, we don't only just have the IFOS program, we also have a non-GMO program mm -hmm. and a probiotic program that, that we're launching very shortly. So Let's talk about that. Okay. Both of those. So let's maybe hit GMO first. What does that look like? So the program that we run right now, it's it's testing based. It's called the iGen program. Mm. And there's a real problem in the, in the industry with um, sourcing of non-GMO ingredients. Yeah. So what we've done is we've actually developed a test that we can perform on finished products to see whether there's any GMO DNA material present in those products. Mm. And we certify on that basis. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we release all, all that is exactly the same. We release it to to consumers online on our website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that would be the same thing. Every lot, self-submission, Brand X comes out with the magnesium, they submit every lot to you and you test for that. For, for the iGen program, they don't actually submit every lot. Mm -hmm. We do an initial test on their product mm -hmm. and we perform surveillance testing. It isn't, it isn't actually every single lot. Okay, mm -hmm. that's still good. Mm -hmm. So if their raw material vendor changes, then you Yes, that will trigger uh, that will trigger a retest, yes. Yeah. And that does happen, guys, in the industry, by the way. Like, if there's a demand for, say, let's see, it's happened recently with vitamin B12, it's happened with uh, calcium, mm -hmm. uh, Albion had an issue. So, so raw material vendors for manufacturers change all the time. So all the time. Yeah, yes. you gotta be aware on that. Um, mm -hmm. And some manufacturers uh, accept rejected raw materials from someone else, that, which is- That is correct. Super shady, but it happens. Yes, it does happen. Crazy industry. Um, <laughs> so what about the probiotic? So for the probiotics, that's a new program that we're currently looking at launching and partnering with a, a few brands. Mm -hmm. um, we, we are members with, uh, with, we're members of the IPA, the International Probiotics Association. Okay. Um, and yeah, we, we love probiotics here. Yeah. So we wanna make sure that you know, we are certifying Good probiotics because it is a new, it is a new, relatively new industry mm -hmm. um, that's achieved consumer awareness, anyways. Um, and there's a lot of good probiotics out there, and there's a lot of bad probiotics out there. Yeah. So, and are you going to look at the strains or make sure that what's on the label is in the bottle, like, wh or maybe it's yep, so new? That's correct. Okay. We're we're going to make sure what's on the label is in the bottle, and similar with the fish oil, that there's no contaminants in mm -hmm. there, that the probiotics are actually alive, because that can be a problem as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's and just for all you all listening, I mean it's really common in the industry for people to have label claim at the start, but they don't put any overage in there. Meaning if it's gonna have fifty billion CFU, they'll put in fifty billion and then you know, and they'll put on there it's a little loophole at the time of manufacturing, yes. you know, or manufactured date instead of expiry date. So that's just a loophole so that you can get away with putting in less without having to put in the overage because some of these, uh, the raw material for probiotics is very expensive. If you put in yes. like two or three X overage, three times what's on the label in hopes that it will last, you know, through the expiry date, that's very expensive. And uh, you know your stuff. Yeah, I've been in the industry for 12 <laughs> years now. So anyway, but it's, it's I, I think this is a, gr a brilliant, uh, you know, applying that same methodology to fish oil, mm -hmm. to, to all these different things is key because People are paying a lot of money for stuff, and, and you know the industry gets a bad rap when someone is buying something and it doesn't even have what's on the label. Yes. And then doctors think supplements suck, and you're like, well, not all supplements suck. That's Some right. do. That's yeah. right. 
Kevin, I really appreciate right. your time. This was no, a lot of fun. Thank you. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. So if folks want to connect with you uh, personally, maybe they have some questions and so forth. Were you open to that or? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Sure. So we'll put links, guys, uh, so you can contact Kevin, Kevin's wife. And so your wife has a podcast again, and she's on Instagram as well, right? Yes. Cool. So if you want mindset and fitness motivation, definitely check that out. Awesome. Appreciate you guys tuning in. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Any comments, questions, uh, type them in below. I'll be following those, and we'll see you on the next one.